Harvey, once you say yes to a project, what are some of the first steps? When I take on a project, I start researching it, looking back and seeing what it is that they've done before or reading any kind of background material, scripts, outlines, things like that. If it's an artist, I'm listening to all the music they've recorded, listen to what the voices are, listen to who maybe the actors are. Um, and in the case of some of these movies, you're, you're looking back in the history of the music that's going to be featured in the films and kind of seeing, okay, what can I do to these songs to make them contemporary and relevant? How far can I push them? Uh, how careful do I have to be because there's some classic copyrights there that you don't want to tamper with? Uh, so you start researching it and then you kind of just start laying out an organizational plan on how you're going to attack the project. Uh, the latest film I'm working on had, I think, 70 songs in it. So, you know, you have to be a little bit strategic with how you do it. It. Um, my next project is broken out into kind of three different groups of styles of songs so I kind of start organizing them uh, the next step is usually kind of start casting and thinking about who am I going to use the directors casting the film I'm casting the music who am I going to use to create the right sound for each individual piece of music and luckily living in LA we have access to the best musicians and uh, best vocalists so I can pull from you know, amazing group of talent but um, you really part of my job is to specific specifically make sure that the people I bring in accomplish the sound that I want for that particular piece of music okay let's talk about sing then um, so once they presented you with maybe the script and you knew who some of the voice actors were um, how did you fit the different songs for each character well that was a trick because there was so much material and so many characters but Ultimately, what the job was for me was to take kind of the playlist that they had put together and figure out what was the personality of each character and how could I translate that into kind of a sonic or a, a genre-specific sound for them. So Ash, the porcupine's real edgy, rocky, you know, so we just knew the songs that she was going to do had to have that edge. Um, Reese's character is very pop and kind of cleaner cut pop pop artist, so those songs obviously kind of led us down that sound. So you really... It was about recognizing the personality of the artist and then just figuring out which songs worked for that and then ultimately making sure that I gave them that consistent sound. Now, once you decided which artist you were going to use, what is your process? Are you contacting the um, songwriter or uh, the artist themselves who performed it? What, what's the process like? Getting approval? Once the songs were chosen and approved by the director and the heads of the studio, uh, there's another person that works with us, his name is Jojo Villanueva, he's uh, the music supervisor, so his job was specifically to go and license and clear all these songs. I think he cleared almost a hundred pieces of music. So that process involves going to the publisher, going to the artists, record companies, performers, all those people, depending on if we're going to use the actual master recording or we're going to recreate it. Just and There's a couple of variables there, but he has to reach out and negotiate all those fees and prices and usages, and that's a, a, a nutty job. He's been doing that for, for Sing for almost two years. Uh -huh. It's a big job. Were there some songs that you presented and you thought, you know, this would be a great match? Um, I know you had Elton John, you had Stevie Wonder, Leonard Cohen, but other people didn't think it was a match and your process for proving your point or working with them, maybe just turning over the control to what they want, what was that like? Well, to be honest, I didn't, cr I didn't choose a lot of the songs. I added my, my opinion and there's a few songs that I brought to the table, but a lot of the songs were chosen by the director. And so because he chose those songs, there wasn't a lot of people we had to, to prove it to. You know, maybe Chris Melodondry, the head of the studio, but for the most part, it was really Garth knowing the songs he wanted, uh, and then how do we make those songs work in the context of the film? And that was the position that I was in. Like Garth loves the song, but he doesn't know how to piece it together, how it's going to fit, and he's not even sure that it is. So, if anything, I'm almost taking his idea and trying to prove it back to him. Like, yeah, Garth, that's a great song title. Let's figure out how we can flip it. Uh, in other cases like the grand finale songs, there was some uncertainty about some of those songs and we went back and forth, we tried three or four different songs in different spots and I would do little rough demos. Uh, Don't You Worry About A Thing was one in particular where we did a lot of versions of, a lot of improvements too. We started at one place and like, we started over here and we ended up way over here on that song. So um, ultimately you're just trying to create the right emotional feel and just hit the right beats for the director and for the story with the music. So. You're choosing the songs based off of that, but once they're chosen, you know, you can take a song 
10 different ways in production. This is all how you produce it, the tempo, the key, the key, the instrumentation. So as long as I was aware of what the song needed to accomplish, I was able to take those songs and uh, manipulate them to kind of fit the scene.